back from the show. I've made it back to Arizona. And in this video, I wanna go through all the pickups that I had in Nashville. Hope you guys really enjoyed the video of me vlogging through the card show. If this is something you'd like for me to do a little bit uh, in the future, by all means, please uh, let me know. I thought it was a lot of fun just showing kind of what it's like to be at a card show in Nashville. Absolutely loved it. It was such a fun time. But now I want to show some of the pickups and what I bought, why I bought them. Um, first up, Caitlin Clark, and this is not going to be any, in any specific order. I just have these cards, you know, in, in order, you know, of basically the deal, but it's no specific timing or anything like that. First card, Caitlin Clark, Bowman's Best. Uh, I've bought a lot of her stuff. You've probably likely seen in some of the previous videos in terms of stuff I'm sending off to get graded. Anytime I can pick up a base card for $10, get it graded and have PSA 10s going for over 100, I'll do that all day long. So the comps on these, PSA 10s over 100, refractors in that 150 to 200 range. So I will buy a lot of these. They also grade out very well. They grade out a lot better than Bowman Chrome. I'm a big fan of that. Next up, John Stockton. This is from Fleer Metal. 1995-96, it is 95-96. I couldn't remember if it was 96-97 or 95-96. Very popular insert set, not one of the, the rarest 90s inserts, but a cool insert set and got it for five bucks, didn't haggle. Got this card as well as the Bill Lambeer autograph that you see here, Upper Deck Legendary, or Legends, Legendary Signatures from 0304. This is LeBron's rookie year. Um, and it, yes, Bill Lambeer signs autographs, this is actually on card, which I think is nice. It's from Upper Deck. It's not Pupini. The Pupini stuff sells for about 15, 20 bucks. This card probably 15 to 20 bucks, but there's not a lot of graded Bill Lambeer stuff out there. I'm really shooting for a nine on this. The only PSA non-autograph I've seen of Bill Lambeer sell, sold for like $49 and it's not from as good of a set. So these two cards, I mean, I'm not really gonna make a lot of money on these. These are just things to add to the inventory. If, if it comes out a little bit better, then you know, hopefully, hopefully I do well on it, or at least break even. Let's just put it that way. Next deal that I got, I thought that these were pretty good. I'm slamming these because I don't want the cards to fall out, just like you saw. I got these from the same dealer, thirty dollars, eight dollars, paid thirty-eight dollars. In my opinion, if you, if cards are priced accurately don't try to talk people down um, if they're priced fairly buy the cards if you're talking them down trying to squeeze out every single penny i think you're doing it wrong you're, you're not doing it right cj stroud very hard to find these centered this one looks pretty good again i haven't looked over these cards in the surfaces so whenever we bust them out maybe there's going to be some underlying stuff it doesn't look all that great but um, in terms of centering which is the big thing it looks great then anthony richardson uh, that one also looks pretty well centered as well so eight dollars there Refra PSA 10s for the CJ Shroud, still 150, 160. Anthony Richardson, I haven't really looked at his comps on these. I don't know if they're, I don't think they're over 100, but I think 70 to 80 is probably in line. The next one I think was a steal. This was uh, a very under the radar hidden card. And I would love if anybody in the comment section, without me saying it yet, can say why this is a special card. Uh, that means you're a true baseball card historian, or at least of recent. So got all of these cards for six bucks. Yes, there's some cheap Otanis. These are basically freebies that you would essentially get, you know, basically and stuff that you buy online. So I'm not really super pumped about those. I just got them because they were kind of cheap. This card though, if you look, this is card US1 from 2018 Tops Update. But I thought that US1 was a Shohei Otani card. It is, but this is the Nolan Ryan SP. Very similar to how Babe Ruth has a variation card for an Otani card, which is an SP. They also have a Nolan Ryan card. Now they did that during Otani's rookie year because Babe Otani obviously draws comparisons to Babe Ruth. He also draws comparisons to Nolan Ryan, which is why Topps has featured him on numerous cards, namely because they're ace pitchers, you know, formerly for the Angels. So Nolan Ryan and Otani have a lot of cards together as combo cards, combo autograph cards, combo memorabilia cards. And I think this is a cool paying homage to the up and coming Shohei Otani and Update series where... Not only does Shohei Otani have a US-1 rookie card, but Nolan Ryan also has an SP card for US-1. I think that's very cool, very cool trivia. And this card, again, I got for $5. Raw, they go between 10 and 20, PSA 10, 70, 80, if not over that. So all that for six bucks. These cards grade out really well. I've bought this card before and graded it. So I think that's great. 
This card, a little bit of an overpay, but I need volume. So $10 on a base hoops card. That card may not even sell for that on eBay. PSA 10s may not go over 50, 60 bucks, but you know, 10 plus 19 to get it graded, that's 29. I think these are pretty easy grades. So, you know, if I can get it for, you know, if I can get 50 out of it as a 10, I think that's great. We need volume. Next, again, kind of similar, same vein. Um, I got all four of these guys for 25 bucks. Again, it's a little bit of an overpay, but if I can get these graded and sell them in the 40 to 45 range, I think that's okay. Again, we need volume. Each one of those can pay for a Big Mac combo meal. 17 bucks now in Connecticut. Next, we have got three uh, cards I got from the same dealer, all in case. So another Hoops rookie, $10. Jonathan Kaminga, red, white, and blue prism rookie, ten dollars, and then also the orange ice, which is the much more rare version. Got that one for ten bucks, so thirty dollars all together. Again, tens on this, fifty to sixty. Really, not a lot of comps on these guys. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga parallel. I think we're looking maybe seventy to eighty for a PSA ten. No ices have sold. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit cha more challenging. It is a little bit perhaps off top to bottom, um, but if this does come out as a ten, it's going to be over a hundred. And Kaminga's a little bit, he's, he's moving the needle a little bit as of late in terms of you know, some of the rookies in his class. Next up, this is a big one, at least in terms of recent releases. I was not expecting to see Court Kings at the show. Not much, but two dealers did have some Court Kings, including two Wimbies. This is a, a rookie insert that looks really cool because it looks like a color blast card. So a lot of people are thinking that this could be like a... Uh, a more pop, a more common color blast card. So I've bought a couple of these on eBay already. I'm having them shipped over from China. Uh, this one I got for $175. So it's about what I've been paying for them. Um, the move here is to try to be first to market. Obviously, there's not any comps. We see what the Prism stuff is selling for. This is a card that I'm hoping to be one of the first to get uh, first to market. You know, having it in hand. I haven't really looked it over that much. The card looks clean. Um, I'm wanting to really take it out just to see what it looks like on the back corners here, just to make sure there's nothing soft. But assuming the card grades out, it would not surprise me if the first couple of these popped for over over 500 bucks as PSA 10s. That's speculation. I know it's gambling, um, but hey, let's gamble. Why not? All right, these next guys, every single card that you see here is gonna be a card that I paid $3 for. So I, I went value box shopping. The, as soon as I sat down, the guy just changed the prices and said, hey, every single card, three bucks. So Shet Holmgren, this is a draft refractor, really not you know, a whole lot of meat on the bone, even as a 10, but still might do it. Uh, Jalen Williams, this PSA 10 base prisms now are going you know, over 60-ish. So, and this one looks pretty centered. So we're going to take a shot at that. Not bad for $3, get it graded for 19, 22 all in. You know, maybe it pops off at 60 to 70. Spencer Strider, very easy grades. And this is his first Bowman paper. Not bad for a Braves, you know, ace pitcher. And PSA 10s on this go for around 45. So again, $3, 19 to get graded, 22, sell it for 45. Um, again, assuming PSA 10. Again, we need volume, need volume. So that's why I'm buying this low end stuff. Bryce Harper, again, PSA 10, maybe 30. So um, these do grid out very well. If they don't grid out well, I can sell them you know, in, in dollar boxes or value boxes. Pete Alonzo, not sure if I'm actually gonna grade this one or not. It actually doesn't appear to be something that's super uh, easily to grade. And the Shohei Otani, I'm not sure if I'm gonna grade that one either because again, it's just a cheap card. Uh, next is uh, Ichiro. This is a rainbow foil. Um, don't know if it's his last flagship release card or not, but it is a rainbow foil, so three bucks. We're just gonna take a look at it and see. Next, we've got some Monopoly. I bought a ton of Monopoly. I don't care if I'm paying 15, I don't care if I'm paying 20, I don't care if I'm paying 25. Um, I bought both of these for 25 a piece. Yes, that is an overpay, but yes, I want as many of these as I can so I can send them off and get them graded. PSA 10s are right currently 250. By the time I get them back, by the time if I sent these off today, I project that the PSA 10s will have dropped in half to roughly 125. Still meat on the bone. So I want as many of those as I can. Next, again, some of these cards you've likely seen me doing deals in the video. So this is one that I picked up in the video uh, on the second day on Saturday. So I got this card for 75. Again, PSA 10s. I just sold a PSA 10 today for $248, $249 at auction. So and I've got probably 15 of those. 
This is a card I don't know how well I'm going to do on. Um, I'm shooting for a nine, mainly because of that soft corner back here on the back. I didn't talk the dealer down. I likely probably should have. Um, I have paid roughly this price for this card previously, and others like it. This is the Missing Links insert set from 2007 Fleer. Every single card is a jersey card. I believe there's six in the set. Um, and I'm going to take a look at it. I don't actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it's actually going to be gradable. So I may not even send that one in. I may just have that as show bait. Wyatt Linkford, he was popping off during the show. Um, at first day of the show, he ended up hitting a home run that afternoon. So the next day, everybody was getting their stuff wiped out. Uh, if there's a Linkford on the table, it was basically getting bought. Um, Unless it was the super high end stuff, there were a couple of dime tins. Uh, a couple of those got traded around. As, as you're, if you saw in the previous video of me doing the vlogging, you heard about some of those deals. Got this one, forty bucks. This is cheaper than what you can pay for them on eBay, plus shipping uh, and, and all included. PSA tins on this currently are in the one thirty five to one fifty range. I predict that those are likely going to go up if everything else starts rising. This is probably one of my favorite deals, and I know that you all saw this on camera. This one's a really, really awesome, fun deal. I'm so glad that I got this. You all didn't see what these cards were, though. Uh, it's, it's just paper Bowman, nothing special, but I love that I got these cards for $10 a pop. It, it makes me so happy. For those, no, it's not first Bowman Chrome, it's not first Bowman, but... These cards were so big, not necessarily just Aflac, but Bowman Aflac and, and really the All-American game cards back in the day. For those of you that don't remember, there used to be Bowman Chrome All-American cards or Aflac All-American. Think 2005 Aflac or 2004 Aflac with Justin Upton, Cameron Maben, autographed Bowman Chromes. Those were the first Bowman Chrome cards. Uh, eventually, they migrated over to paper and they started doing these, which they gave out at the game. And then they also had the ones that um, were autographed and inserted into Bowman Draft products. Now they call them the, the you know, All-American game or whatever. So it was Aflac and now it's All-American or, or, you know, whatever the, the sponsor is. These were a lot bigger back in the day, especially if they were autographed. But um, to get these and get them graded, I'm, I'm super pumped that, that there's actually stashes of these out there. This just is a perfect example. If you know what you're doing and you know what to look for, there's influencers flying around all these tables and literally there's a stash of these guys just sitting here staring me in the face and I know how special they are. The thing is there's a lot of other cards out there that are special in other ways that I didn't really know anything about that I passed over. So really, if you have a good, this is a perfect example. If you have a niche or a specialty, you really can do well. Why are these good? Paid $10 a piece. As the dealer said, they do in fact sell for upwards of $20 raw a pop, um, sometimes even more than that. The PSA 10s have literally been between $125 and $169. So if all these, and I got to pick out which ones were my favorite ones, which ones I thought were going to be the, the best grading candidates. Now, whether or not they all grade out, not sure, but even two of them, guys, it just really makes it worth it. But let's say I got three of them. That, that's that's incredible so really happy with that and then i went through his bowman paper stack got four number one pick paul Skeens, and then a wyatt linkford <laughs> paper again these wyatt linkford's as psa 10s these are going to be right now current state probably 40 to 50 dollars for just for the paper they're going to grade out very easy then paul Skeens. i have no qualms or in believing that i could probably get 30 a pop for those now is it worth getting greater right now versus waiting for a special who knows i basically paid two dollars for these ten dollars a pop for the bryce harper two dollars for all those the why it's an eight dollar card the Skeens are basically a, a couple bucks a piece so just a great deal ba value shopping at its finest Next, uh, this is a great buy as well. Jason Witten Autograph Finest, rookie card, number to $9.99. Now, I don't know if it's going to be a PSA 10, but I think, I'm pretty confident this is going to be a PSA 9. The great thing is there's not a lot of PSA 9s out there. There have been some refractor sales that have sold. Brought closer in the 150 to 200 range as PSA 9s. I'm very curious what this is going to go for. I paid 75 for this. Now, if it ends up coming back at 10, all bets are off. Centering's really good. The thing that really has me worried, maybe a little bit top to bottom centering. And then the back, there's the faintest of touches. Um, 
you know, if you if this was graded maybe six or seven years ago, this could be a PSA 10 candidate, but I'm not so sure now. And I'll, it's probably going to be a little bit more off center, top to bottom. But it, these cards, I love stuff like this. Love it, love it, love it. Again, this stuff is stuff that collectors want. It's dried up. It's hard to find. It's not the same common stuff like this that you're going to see over and over and over. The prisms and the all the new junk out there. It's not that. I love stuff like this. This is really cool. The dealer had a lot of it. He also had a lot of, you know, just really off the wall, oddball stuff that he had a really fun table. Let's just put it that way. Very unique and I enjoy that type of stuff. Okay, the last deal that I got, I spent a lot of time on this. Um, you all saw me skimming through the boxes in the video, but I didn't get, my GoPro camera really wasn't shooting down, so I did remove a lot of that, that because I didn't want there to be dead space in the video. But you did see me at the table. Basically what I did is I got a stack of MJ cards. This is the only deal where I actually negotiated. Every other card was basically priced at a point where I was comfortable with it and I didn't want to necessarily rob the dealer. Um, if they price the card competitively and I'm okay with the price, I'm going to say yes to it. I treat people the way I want to be treated. As I said at the, at the outset of the video, if you are trying to squeeze off every single dollar that you can to get the card at the cheapest possible price, you're doing it completely wrong. I don't want to deal with you. The dealers likely don't want to deal with you. Literally, if people are pricing their cards fairly, treat them with honesty, treat them with integrity, treat them with respect, buy the card at a price that you are comfortable with if they price it to you. Don't try to get absolute bottom dollar and have that be the driving force because you're going to burn a lot of bridges. You're going to come across as, you know, not really good for the hobby. So all those other cards, I paid what the dealers said. I didn't talk them down. <clears throat> this one I did, and the reason why, there's a couple prices I did disagree with, notably cards at the bottom of the stack. So this is a full stack of MJ cards that starts off with the cheapies first, and then it goes all the way to the more expensive stuff or stuff that didn't have stickers on them. So I basically added up everything. It adds up to 165. There's roughly four or five cards that don't have prices on them. Granted, some of those are a little bit pricey. You're in the 10, 15, 20 range. And then I basically offered him 150, which I thought was fair. And he also accepted. So these first couple cards, again, they're not going to have prices on them. They're just cheapies. Uh, very, very cheap cards. I went through a lot of MJ cards and I tried to find the ones that I thought were going to have the best shot at getting graded. Again, I still have to look at these a little bit closer. 95, 96 tops. Very difficult to find in good shape now because they've been out for so long and that one's not even a top loader. It actually does look good. I took it out of the top loader. Looks good. I know PSA is grading the crap out of these very harshly. Tops 10, I love Wizards MJ cards. They are highly overlooked. Um, you'll see had a $4 sticker on this. This card looks very, very clean. So we're going to give that one a try. <clears throat> then we've got Two of these um, cover story cards. I can't remember what set these are actually from. I've seen these before. Maybe one of the box sets. thought those were really cool. $5 uh, stickers on those. Then we've got Topps Gallery 95.96. Gonna, we're going to see on this one uh, whether or not that one's a grading candidate or not. But um, Topps Gallery from 95.96. This is a Wizards MJ insert card, which again, very, very tough. I like any any insert of MJ, I think is great. Any base card's great. Uh, actually, this is not an insert. This one is a subset card, so card 155. So five bucks on that one, not bad. It kind of looks like an insert, so I'll, I'll take it. Uh, next, we've got Upper Deck Standing Ovation. This is 0304 LeBron's rookie year. Card looks uh, fairly clean, so we're gonna give that one a shot. Upper Deck First Edition, I think 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, got a $5 sticker on that as well. SP Authentic, these grade out very, very well. They unfortunately don't sell as well as they used to because they grade out so well, and there's a lot of them out there. But I'm shooting for around 50 or so if that one does come back a PSA 10. This one's not going to grade out as a PSA 10, but even PSA 9s do well. And I'm very surprised by the sticker on this. I got this for 6 bucks. Um, that's a card that usually goes for around 10 to 15 raw. PSA 9s, I've moved these for $60. Uh, PSA 10s go in the 150 to 200 range, depending on the day. This is not going to be a PSA 10, but anytime we can buy that for six bucks, pay 19 and get it graded, you're looking at 25 in it. If I can move it as a PSA 9 for 60, I think that's great. Fantastic. 
Graded these before too during the COVID boom actually sold a couple of these PSA 10s for over a hundred uh, as we're going Kawhi or yeah, Kawhi. This is Kawhi's here. So 2011, 2012. So paid six bucks for that one. We'll see what it does. I don't even know what PSA 10s go for these days. So we're going to have to look that one up. Upper Deck Glass. Just got two of these guys uh, in. Actually, these are really cheap. I think the ones I got on eBay, I paid like two or three bucks for. Paid six for this one. I can look at it. I can see that it looks pretty clean. So I'm... Um, don't hope hope for the best. Again, this is all cards. You know, I'm looking at it in a top loader. I don't have the cards out. I'm not molesting the cards. So this is Hot Prospects 0708. Six bucks. Looks pretty good. Maybe. Yep. I mean, we're gonna see if that's edge damage or not. That is edge damage. Damn it. Uh. Oh well, we're gonna make up for it in the next couple. Trust me. All right. Finest six dollars. Dude, I'm paying ten to fifteen for these guys. Six bucks. Let's go. Let's go. PSA 10s for that. 80, 90, 100 dollars. This is a good one too. You guessed it. Oh, that's $10. I forgot. I thought I paid six for that. Uh, $10. Tops Pristine 2002-2003. Just sold a PSA 10 for $89.99 just this past week. So I want as many of those as I can. This is an insert set, and these are starting to be some of those cards I didn't think were priced all that great. This is Upper Deck Retro. It's an insert set for Jordan. And again, because it's a full Jordan insert set, I'm not super into those, um, but I will buy them if they look pretty clean and try to get them graded. But again, it's got $8 stickers on them. Again, that's why I don't really, I wouldn't want to pay that normally, but we're going to give it a shot. Same thing with this one. So this one has a $10 sticker on it, $98.99, Skybox Molten Metal. So they had Metal in $95.96, Metal in $96.97, Metal in $97.98, as well as Metal Universe Championship. And then in $98.99, they went to Skybox Molten Metal, um, which was a little bit different. It's less popular. There's no Precious Metal Gem in here, although there are some parallels and there's other some other inserts, notably the um, the... Uh, metal explosion insert set which is really pay popular in basketball not so much in baseball um, this is a, a really really cool card uh, in terms of just its design and how it looks this was a much more premium card compared to 96 97 and 97 98 96 97 and 97 98 got popular because of precious metal, precious metal gems um, which were really more popular obviously in 97 98 so Otherwise, back in the day, this card was a much more premium card compared to a base 97-98. Um, of course, Precious Metal Gym Craze has kind of changed a lot of that. Upper Deck Sweet Shot. This card, $15 sticker on it. Disagree with that. That's a very old sticker. You can see these are old, grummy top loaders. So the prices likely haven't been changed in a while. This card, whenever it first came out, $25 sticker. $25 price in Beckett. People forget Wizards cards had a premium whenever MJ was playing. They sold for more than Bulls cards. Obviously, that trend has reversed, but um, that's just one of the things. Whenever the player jumps to a new team, that's kind of like the new shiny object. And whenever MJ came back, there was such a buzz about him in the hobby. His Wizards stuff really did sell for a premium uh, as it relates to base cards uh, over his Bulls stuff. Then we got the first year Tops Pristine, 2001, 2002. Uh, for, I love this set. I love just you know all the uh, etching that goes on with this card. It truly is a pristine, beautiful card. What a beautiful de design for a base set. Unfortunately, Tops is not doing this type of quality work with Tops Pristine and nowadays or really with any of the offerings that they make. But I love this card. I wish they would go back to their roots. Such a beautiful card. $25 sticker on it. Disagree with this price. Again, that's why I wanted to try and negotiate down for, for the whole lot. I'd be more comfortable with a $15 price on this, which I think is fair uh, for both parties. But again, $25, we're going to try that out. This one, I really, really like this. Uh, you all have seen me grade cards similar to this on the channel, and I've done very, very well. This is not the rare version for the Legendary 13 subset from 0708 Fleer Ultra. Uh, but it is a version. Um, it's not the rarest version. It's not the gold medallion or, or any of the other ones. But still, we're going to give this a shot. Did have a $25 sticker on it, which I honestly think is fair. And even if this comes back a PSA 9, I think that we're still going to be in good shape. Now, these are some cards next that uh, did not have stickers on them. Um, so the first one was a, just a regular upper deck from, I believe, 2001, 2002. Uh, the first upper deck uh, release that came out looks pretty uh, like it might be a potential grading candidate. So it's probably like a three, $4 card. 
Next, again, this is from Upper Deck uh, Athlete of the Century. It's a Jordan insert set. This is probably like a 5 or $6 card. So, again, kind of more of a freebie. And then this one I'm really excited about. It is not priced, but this is one that I think that I really got a good deal on. Michael Jordan was in one of the USA box sets or uh, complete sets from uh, 95, 96, if I'm not mistaken. Dealer had a couple of these die cut versions. These cards sell for about $20 raw, and there's not a lot of them graded out there. This one actually looks like it could potentially be a decent grading candidate um, until hopefully I take it out, and it still looks like a decent grading candidate. But $20 a pop for these die cuts. Really, really nice. So, you know, at the end of the day, 25, let's call that five, and let's call that five. $35 in value, and then I talked them down roughly $15. So really about $50 off in terms of what he had marked for each of the cards. Um, so I got about a $50 discount. So almost about 25% off on the lot, which I thought was really good, especially considering you know, a lot of these cards could very well be gradable. Really, as I go through here, and if, you know, me paying $150, if I get three or four of these guys to gym, it basically pays for everything, and then the nines are kind of gravy. So that's why I like MJ cards. And, you know, the ones that are obviously not gradable, I'm not going to necessarily send in, but they're going to be great to have at card shows and just, you know, stash away for, you know, little giveaways, etc. cetera. Uh, ended up getting these two guys. So CJ Stroud, Prism, Orange Disco. Why did I buy them? Well, one, I bought them because they're underpriced relative to the raw eBay price. These cards really are in the 180, close to 200 range for centered clean copies. Both of these are centered and clean. PSA 10s of these guys are in the 450 range. So, great purchase. I saw the first one. He said he had a second one, which made me very excited. He did have some other CJ Strouds. Unfortunately, some of the other parallels don't grade out as well as they're not as centered, notably that red, white, and blue. Um, he also was a little bit high on some of the parallels that actually were centered that I would have potentially been uh, considered. Um, it was so high that I didn't even want to really negotiate. I saw these and I was pretty happy with that and just kind of got them and moved on. So um, again, as I was saying, spent roughly about $1,100 on everything, uh, anticipating post-grading value to be between $2,500 and $3,000. So this kind of really did make the trip in terms of going out there, spending time with some family, eating some good food, um, and then having some time with some of my card buddies that I knew who were coming down from Kentucky. Basically made it a weekend that was profitable or will be profitable by the time I sell everything and got some good entertainment value at the same time. So that's kind of why I bought everything and uh, that's what I bought. Let me know what you all think down below. Did you all like the vlog? Did you all like me to do more of that type of stuff whenever I go to shows? Um, had a lot of issues with the GoPro trying to get it to capture everything and you know get a good view, especially as I'm leaning forward into cases. So um, I'll tinker around with that and get it mastered. But if you guys like that type of stuff, I can do a lot more of that moving forward. All right. Let me know what you think. We'll see you next time.